Um, there are many things the amendment does, but, but let me just hit a couple of highlights. It refers to uh, certain riverboats' ability to relocate, but only within its local area. For instance, it allows the Peoria Riverboat uh, to move, but no more than 10 miles away from its current location. Um, the bill requires that um, a uh, racetrack that puts in the slot machines would have to have either an all-weather egress between the slot machine area and the racetrack area so people can freely move back and forth or at least create a shuttle bus service which would be free so that we don't just have people uh, gambling in the ra at the slot room so that we can continue to promote their horse racing industry to encourage people that go to the racino to actually go over and watch horses run. Um, it provides that our racetracks in Cook County and may relocate within three miles of their current location um, under certain conditions. It provides a two million dollar renovation tax credit to be utilized by all river boats in the state of Illinois. Uh, the bill um, provides that all of the facilities authorized under this bill might build temporary facilities because we know it may take up to two years to build a uh, new facility. We want to get the money flowing, we want to get people hired, we want to bring in this money and uh, create the jobs in the state of Illinois, so the bill would allow all of these folks to create temporary gaming locations. Um, it, the bill requires that all new gaming facilities be LEED certified. For those of you who are concerned about the environment, concerns about a green a, a economy, uh, this bill is, is uh, going to take care of that issue. The bill would say that if the city of Chicago chooses to conduct air gaming at an airport, that it must occur inside security. Why do we do this? Because we don't want the common areas to become a, 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 uh, a place that people travel to to gamble. We want this to be only a place where travelers who have plane tickets uh, can possibly use the airport facility. There will be a, a, an amendment for the floor that will state that the city may only have one building. So they may go to the airports, but they can only have one building because there was a concern that uh, some raised that the city would uh, perhaps take it upon itself to put a thousand positions in this building and a thousand positions in another building and have three or four mini casinos around the city. Our amendment will say that they cannot do that. This bill would provide uh, that uh, there be a depressed communities fund. Uh, this depressed communities fund would take money out of proceeds of gaming and uh, be an advisory board. There would be an advisory board created to advise DCEO about grants to local and depressed communities. Uh, this bill would provide that the Perry Mutual tax credit now being given to uh, racetracks, uh, which is in essence a real estate tax credit, um, start to disappear but be capped at 50%, but that all of this credit must be used on the marketing of horse racing so that we can continue to grow this industry. After all, it would be, um, I think, an inappropriate end to this if after we do all of this, there's a whole bunch of money and the, all the people in the racing industry, including the owners and the trainers and all, are doing great, but if you go to the, into the racetrack, there's actually nobody watching the horses run around the racetrack. So we put this in here to make sure that the owners of the tracks would continue to market the racetracks. Um, this clarifies that the racetrack should be prohibited from having table games, um, but would not be prohibited from having slot machines that simulate card games. Um, uh, the bill would prohibit the gaming board from issuing any new licenses until after video gaming operations have commenced. The reason for this is that many of you remember that I was the sponsor of the Video Gaming Act and that bill passed almost two years ago and in that period of time there's been a lot of foot dragging and heel dragging by the gaming board and no one's been licensed yet to have a video game. In fact, the um, uh, bidding uh, for the uh, central communication system was screwed up. They had to redo it, and so we've been way behind in that process. And there's a fear by many that if this bill were to pass without such a provision, that the gaming board would simply bypass the two-year-old Video Gaming Act and never uh, license any of those folks. And of course, 
since that bill precedes this one, those uh, small businesses around the state of Illinois ought to have their opportunity to have their licenses approved. Um, uh, this amendment uh, adds to the bill a requirement that the gaming board must consider the extent to which ownership includes the greatest number of minorities, women, and disabled persons. We cannot mandate it. We don't believe that is an appropriate and constitutional provision. But it is true that the gaming board must consider this. And so when several people come to bid on a given license, the gaming board must consider this just as they must consider revenue sharing and other provisions that are already in the statute. It provides some relief to the current river boats. As we know, we have a down economy, as we know as a result of the smoking ban, which we never should have done. Um, uh, many of the current operations have lost significant sums of money and have some concern about what the competition from these new operations will bring them. And so we have provided uh, a 5% uh, credit against their AGR for 10 years. We've provided a lower rate on table games, uh, which many other states do as well. Of course, table games are uh, games like um, uh, uh, poker and blackjack and craps that require people. And those people, of course, take down salaries. Uh, and with this lower rate for table games, it will encourage them to expand those games when they have a chance to expand their operations. Uh, 